Okay, hi, we are now on live. So, good evening, everyone. We are here for another edition of our big team meetup. So, let's wait for a few uh, for for a few viewers to come in and to join our live and to watch our live. So, for this big C Thursday, this is a very timely and a very 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 relevant topic. I mean, I cannot emphasize this emphasize it anymore because we are all experiencing this whatever our status in life is and whatever country we're at so the topic that we will discuss tonight is about inflation and strategies on how to amazing speaker which is very credible about the topic circulating around uh inflation and everything about it. So, okay, let's wait for a few viewers to, to come in and to watch us. So are we hearing like a little music while waiting for everyone to watch? Okay, so we have already comments. So yes, Poe said hi coming and she says that she wants to beat inflation. Yes, that's why the topic of our talk for this Thursday's Bixie Meetup is beat it. Like, of course, everyone wants to beat inflation, right? No one wants to be defeated by inflation. Am I right? Can I get an amen from our viewers, right? I mean, me also personally, I want to beat inflation. I will listen to this talk. And you also have to listen to this talk. So let's wait for a few of our viewers to... Elise? Hi, sorry to interrupt. Can you can you accept me on IG? Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, hold on. Okay, accept. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, did you receive it already? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Accept. Wait, wait, wait. There. Okay, you... Thank yeah. you. Hold okay, on. there. Accept. There's an echo. There. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, okay, there. Accept. Huh? Okay, mm -hmm. there's no echo. Okay, yeah. there's no echo. So yes, all of our viewers. Wait, there's someone who who commented, "Coming, please make my money double. I trust you." <laughs> Again, we are just here to guide you on making uh, uh to to give you financial uh to guide you in making financial decisions. And yes, for our topic today, it's about inflation and strategies to beat it. But I'm sorry, I believe we cannot double your money. <laughs> We're just here to, you know, like discuss about inflation for tonight. So yes, from Patricia Garcia, she said, yes, amen. Amen to beating inflation because no one wants inflation but it's the other way around and my friend who says go Eunice thank you so much for the support but we will proceed with the talk proper okay so attorney Bill I, I will turn the floor over to you to do the honors uh hello can you hear me hello good afternoon so yeah we uh, wow we are starting at exactly 6 30 p.m tonight so hello sa mga friends ko na nanonood <laughs> yeah i invited like i was like inviting everyone earlier to watch so yeah it's almost no it's 6 30 meaning in the philippines you know we've, we're starting to wrap up from our from our daily jobs and yes we're so grateful that we still have a job you know during these days i know times are challenging really so even uh, even sometimes when i'm really like tired <laughs> with everything you know that happened there's happening left and right but i'm so i'm still so grateful that you know um i have a job that uh is keeping me afloat despite you know like the ch challenging times as we're having uh, a discussion tonight about inflation which is one of the biggest challenges um um in in our daily life uh yeah so i was just discussing with my friends earlier about uh what inflation did to uh to me personally because uh i i drive a car and <laughs> the uh, gas prices in the philippines have i don't know tripled maybe and it's really like i really i, I really felt it because you know i used to have this uh, uh allowance for my for my own uh uh, transportation and gas since I drive myself to the office and you know to 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 other stuff uh, to other places that I go to and it wasn't it wasn't really uh, heavy on my part and I, I had that budget for 
a long time but now it's like <laughs> it's tripled and it's shocking no so really in, in inflation rates are so so much higher lately so again um for um, as an introduction before we jump into the main topic tonight which is beat it i want to sing but <laughs> let's reserve that for next time no saka na ko kakanta but um uh, uh, my sister was uh, telling uh, us last night she almost did a moonwalk with the title of our <laughs> of our meet up tonight which is beat it so yeah so how do we beat inflation during these times and before we go um to the main part of our program uh for those who are for those who are always watching uh, us here on Big C, meet up Thursdays. Can you please type in, hey, I'm here again, hello, or just say, I'm here again. Uh, thank you for supporting Big C. Thank you for always tuning in. And I hope uh, you um, have learned a lot. And um, even uh, I myself, who has been, you know, like manning the 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 lives every Thursday, I'm also learning. No, it's always a learning experience for me, and that is what Bixie is all about. So, what is Bixie? Oh, galing ng segue ko, no. <laughs> that was a smooth transition. So, what is Bixie? That's my role tonight. So, for those who uh, are here for the first time, thank you for tuning in. But what is Bixie? So, Bixie is a platform. So we are an app. We have a we have an app. It's available via the um uh it, we have an app available via Apple and Google Play, but we are a platform that connects connects women who want to invest, who are looking for options for investments by giving women the proper knowledge, network, and tools to start investing. So um, gaya nga nang na-mention ni Eunice kanina, we're not here to give, you know, like financial or legal advice, but we are connecting one woman to another woman to a, a network of women uh, who are interested, who are looking at options for investment para magkaroon sila ng knowledge, network, and tools to be able to start investing. And like what uh, mentioned uh, earlier by our um, speakers, invest, investing is doesn't doesn't mean... But you know, ah, okay, I have one million to put in investment. Investing starts uh, with small amounts, and that's what we are encouraging women to do. So you can download the Bixie app. Oh, that's another smooth transition. Thank you, Eunice, for flashing the, the, the QR codes. So you can download the Bixie app anytime for free. It's not paid. Uh, you can just scan uh, the, the, the QR code flash on your screen. For those who are on Instagram, hello, hello, thank you for watching. You can click on the link on our bio, uh, bio of my Big C, and there are options there if you're using an iPhone or if you're using a um, an Android phone. So that's what Big C is about. And I and when you download the app, you can see yung mga sinasabi ko na knowledge, network, and tools. Everything is in there. So I give the floor back to Eunice. I think from downloading, she will be mentioning a lot more about the Big C app. So back to you Eunice. so thank you very much so of course first you have to download the bixie app like what we've mentioned and what's in the app like what usually people ask of course we have a lot of things in store but most especially we also have few deals or marketplace deals that you can avail while using the app and if you buy those products exclusively on the app, you will avail only those discounts from the app. So first, of course, you have to refer your friends for them to download the app. Every referral that you do in, in, down, in downloading the app, you would earn your Bix coins. And there, so next, like what I mentioned earlier, you can purchase your favorite essential oil, namely Joy in a Bottle, and get exclusive discounts when you purchase that through our Bixie app. So that 20% discount can only be availed if you purchase the essential oil through our app. So next, apart from the essential oil, of course, you have to get your coffee fix right every morning like it's part of our routine so you will also get your exclusive 20 percent discount when you purchase juris Bruden's coffee only and exclusively via our bixie app so what are you waiting for all you have to do is go to google store to play store go to uh go to the app store and you just type in bixie download the app for free it's totally free then you can buy the products mentioned over there and of course there are more merchants or rather 
sellers to come in the in the next few days that will having or will be offering also their hot deals. So next, okay. So we go to the other part. So first, apart from downloading the app, you will also get to experience the new updates and the new releases from the Big C app. So for those who are already using the app or who has the existing app, all you have to do is just update your app to the latest version for you to avail or to see the latest updates about the app or Big C. So the tools have been moved to the navigation bar of the of the app. So if you can't relate to the updates that I'm mentioning, it means that you haven't updated your app. So all you have to do is update. And for those who haven't downloaded the app, make sure to download and automatically you will get the updated version. So the goals and what's in my number are also found in the tools part of the app. Then next, our vibe is lighter and brighter. It's pink and purple. It's very feminine, so it's more pleasing to the eye and more pleasing to you. So yes, you have to feel it every time you use it. So next is the knowledge hub and the bookmark and the bookmarks part, wherein you can just search it and search for the articles that you want and bookmark the articles that you want to read some other time like make it as a hobby of yours instead of browsing on facebook just you know take your time to read articles and to bookmark some and read it the following day or the or the next day right so there so next when you use uh, so, some of our tools and you will achieve some goals, you can share your goals to your friends in the community and you can tag them along and share your progress. And lastly, you can do your updates or feedbacks or notifications on the upper right corner of the app, which is the notification bell. So, it, so the notifications will just pop up there and it's very, very easy to look at. So yes, like what we mentioned earlier, learn... Uh, refer to earn once you refer our app to your friends for download you will automatically earn big coins that will eventually yes be used and then the what's my number portion wherein you can set your goals on saving it's found on the games part of the app so there you go that's it for my updates about the app and all promotions so i'll get back to you later and now we will proceed with the talk proper so like what I've mentioned earlier, for today's Big C Thursdays, it's all about beating inflation because no one wants to be defeated by inflation, but instead, we will beat inflation. So before I introduce our speaker, uh, he is the CEO and the founder of MoneyFit, a Singapore fintech with global ambitions. He spent many years in the investment industry in London, New York, and Singapore as a stockbroker fund manager, and trader in firms such as Schroders, Merrill Lynch, Credit Suisse, and JP Morgan. He is passionate about helping empower ordinary people to start creating happier and healthier financial futures for themselves and their loved ones, and set up Money Fit in Singapore last year just to do that. Wow, that's very empowering indeed. There is too much information online these days, so Money Fit helps you do what you have to do, which you do first. And with confidence comes taking action. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here's our speaker for tonight's topic, coming. Thank you so much for the introduction. Very kind of you, Eunice. And it's great to be here uh, with, uh, with the whole Big C, with the Big C team. Um, uh, just to share that uh, I'm a very happy user of the Bixi app. It's an awesome app, so I'm glad there's so many people uh, who are who are who have downloaded it and are using it, and just keep on using it. Um, and uh, exactly as as you were saying earlier, um, just make it part of your regular habit uh, because it's so much healthier for you uh, now and in the future uh, than than endless scrolls of. Everyone talks about cat videos. It's it's, it's not all that people watch, um, but but there's so much out there um, that there's really just a time suck, a waste of time. So so Bixi is most certainly not that. You're doing something that's enjoyable, uh, that's interesting, and really good for yourselves and your loved ones. Perfect. Well, I, it's up to me to put 
coming in the hot seat tonight. So hi, everybody. Uh, for those who join us every week, you all know me. I'm Rosalia. For those who are new, I'm Rosalia. I, I'm still Rosalia. I'm the CEO of Bixie. Um, and uh, occasionally, for our very special guests, I am also the host of the Fireside Chat. So I'm really excited um, you know, to have coming. Uh, financial experts are really difficult to find, number one. Number two, they're really difficult to access. So I hear this a lot from women, particularly, like, I want to do something about my money. I just don't know where to look. And a lot of the research actually indicates we're quite intimidated by financial experts, you know, walking into like a fancy bank and saying, okay, what do I do? Um, so we, we're bringing these financial experts to you in a much more amenable, a much more, less intimidating environment. So I want all of you to really take advantage of this. You know, we don't often get an opportunity to ask people who do this for a living um, questions on what, you know, how should we approach things or, you know, what does, what does a smart strategy look like? So don't be shy. We have uh, Bixie team members monitoring all of the communities where we're uh, airing this. So in Facebook, IG, type in your comments. Um, don't be shy and we will answer these questions. So I also just want to note, you know, everything inside of um, uh, in, in the Bixie meetups are informational. They should absolutely not be taken as financial advice, even though we have a financial expert here. Um, but what we're going to help you do is ask the right questions and have some semblance of a strategy. And as we know, you know, whenever people say do your own research, we'll also give you some guidance as to like what those steps look like that, that don't just involve going on Google or TikTok, right? So we're going to help curate an experience so that it, it that seeking financial advice is more um, approachable and accessible. Um, so first question, uh, you know, Eunice had mentioned your background, right? She mentioned a lot of very fancy uh, banks. Um, and so I guess the question is, you know, what was your journey to finance and what has been your journey from finance to fintech? Um, and what, you know, what are you as a human being, as an individual, like, what are you trying to accomplish in this journey? That's a great question. Great question. Great questions. Um, uh, I suppose the journey into finance for me was just um, that uh, both economics and finance are really about how people do things, how people, it's not just about making money, it's about how people do things, how things interact. And those are, um, to a greater or lesser extent, reflected in how stock markets and financial markets work in general. Um, and on top of that, there's another layer that, that, that made it very, very interesting for me to want to, to move into, which is that uh, so much uh, is down to the psychology of crowds, mm -hmm. of individuals, of, of marketplaces, um, and how those interact was always something that was very fascinating to me. And when I started um, uh, in, the, in the markets, I had no idea how little I knew um, uh, along that part, that, that aspect in particular. So I started uh, in the late 80s in London, a few years after Michael Jackson's Beat It, um, but fully into the era of big suits and even bigger shoulder pads. Um, and two weeks after I started, uh, there was a gigantic crash. If you look at the share price charts or the stock market charts now of the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500 Dow Jones, it was, an, it was absolutely calamitous at that period. If you look back on it now, it turns out that it was just fine. You can barely see it on the charts. And that was a huge lesson for me about investing. Um, so I thought actually at the time that have I made the most awful, terrible mistake because uh, I just started straight out of university, two weeks into this crash. Um, everything is going to hell in a handbasket. Turns out it was, turned out to be okay. So I stayed on in the industry. I went to Singapore, then New York and Singapore again, as, uh, as, as Eunice mentioned. Um, but as time group went on, I was, I was thinking, is it still the right place for me? While the industry itself was still healthy, um, is it the right place for me? Because I realized that uh, young people and women in, in particular were not investing. So that was my, that, that's what I'd been doing all this time. I'd been investing, advising people, doing it myself. Um, and many people just weren't doing it. And I couldn't really quite figure out why. Um, and, uh, and so much of what uh, Rosalia with Bixie is doing is trying to help 
more people, whether they're men or women, young, young people, or old people, to participate. Uh, you, you, have a, you have a particular focus with Bixi, but it's actually something that is, um, that, that is very worrying on a sort of universal basis um, and definitely contributing to massive, uh, massive inequalities, um, uh, which, uh, which is a conversation for another time and another, another forum. Um, but it's something that I wanted to address. So um, a partner and I set up, set up a fintech company in Europe a number of years ago um, to address this gap. And uh, we started uh, the company in Asia uh, less than two years ago because we felt that a Asian um, uh, consumers, investors, uh, individuals needed this as much or more uh, than, than Europeans. And we started working with Bixi from uh, uh, from the end of last year, and, and it, we, we believe that this is a is a great um, a great combination of of um, of how we uh, how we are thinking about uh, about uh, markets, but also more 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 importantly, how about we're, how we are thinking about individuals and how we want to help. Hmm. I really like what you just said about the psychology, um, which is a, <laughs> speaking of excellent segues, one boy. This is a good segue into my next question, which is, I think this is, I think this answer might surprise people. So full caveat, I did my master's in economics, so I, I know a little bit about inflation, but I want to hear this from Cummings perspective. What's inflation? Like, what is it? <laughs> what is it? What is it? I only did a bachelor's in economics, so, so I'm happy to be corrected, but um, I guess it, overall, without, without going into the, to the um, heavy duty economics, is when prices go up. Um, yeah. uh, for most of what you come across um, uh, on, on a regular basis, whether you're a company or whether you're an individual, when prices are going up, that's known as inflation. In case you're wondering, disinflation is when prices are going up less quickly. Um, deflation is when prices are actually going down. Uh, and usually it's measured on a year, uh, or, or comparing prices on 12 months earlier. There are many different uh, combinations. Um, but that's usually the, the, the number that you look at, a whole basket of the things that you buy as an individual. Uh, they're all added up um, and they're weighted based on how much of your, your wallet it takes up. Uh, and then they compare the price of all of those things uh, with the prices a year earlier. Perfect. Now, this is the really interesting part. Why is there inflation? That is a really interesting question. Um, again, without going into the, the, the sort of the heavy duty economics of it, mainly because I, 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 I would probably get half of it wrong, but the real causes that, that we see are twofold uh, or potentially two things. One would be um, when there's, uh, when people have too much money um, compared to the amount of things that they want to buy and they continue to go ahead and buy them, then the people selling uh, will quite rightly think, well, I don't have, uh, th there's so much demand for my, for my stuff. I can raise the prices, make more money, which sounds great, right? Um, so there's too much money um, compared to the stuff. The other main reason that, that this could happen would be from the stuff side, where there's just not enough stuff. Um, and that can be uh, from, uh, from a cost uh, going up or supply going down uh, from outside of, um, outside of the economy, outside of the things that drive the individual. But what's really inflation, uh, uh, inflation what's really interesting about inflation is that it, it sort of takes on a life of its own. The way I think about it is like frank inflation, where uh, if you think about it, if your costs go up, if your transport costs go up, if your food costs go up, dining out, everything goes up, um, what do you do? You ask for a raise. Um, so if the boss um, uh, gives you the raise, then their costs go up. And if they, their costs go up, then they will charge more. And if all the bosses charge more, then guess what? Your costs go up. And what do you do? You, try, you ask for a raise again. So even if you take away that initial uh, reason that, 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 that you're asking about, Rosalia, whether it's uh, too much demand or... or, or um, uh, costs going up from elsewhere or supply going down from elsewhere, it can build, build it on itself and just take on a life of its own. And that's what's really, really dangerous. Um, and right now, guess what? We have both. So we've had um, uh, demand uh, uh, coming down 
because of um, because of the pandemic. But there's a huge stimulus, um, a, a lot of um, money being thrown into the system, so that it not so, so that it doesn't all go down uh, through the floor. So you've had a huge stimulus um, for the last couple of years, um, uh, thanks to COVID, and then. Uh, at the end of last year, beginning of this year, you've had what, what people like calling revenge retail. So people are saying, I've been locked up for so long and I have cash. I'm going to go and spend it and enjoy spending it. And who can blame them? Who can blame you? Um, at the same time, um, uh, you've had uh, the supply uh, issues. Uh, you've had, um, had difficulties shipping, um, shipping goods uh, places. So that, that, that's the problem on the other side. So you've had kind of both of these things happening, and then you have um, have uh, a war going on, a land war in Europe. So that's led to oil and wheat prices, and uh, and it's not just the oil in your in your petrol tank, um, as as Phil you were saying earlier, but also um, also uh, the cost of transport, buses, also the cost of moving things around to supply. So uh, so the, all of these things have come together to give us the inflation that we're seeing now. Um, I believe in the Philippines, this is the highest inflation uh, you've seen in like four years. Um, uh, it's not across every little, uh, absolutely everything. It's not like everything goes up at the same rate. Um, because of oil, I, I believe your transport costs have gone up something like 17%, which is crazy. Um, and and uh, everything, uh, almost everything hinges uh, on, the, uh, on the sort of transport cost when you're just moving everything around. And, you, and, every, and people are really feeling it. Yeah, I think the 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 reason why you know I really wanted to get into the why I think it's really important for people to understand because everybody throw these words inflation recession inflation recession you need to under to to strategize against this you need to understand mm. what you're dealing with and I think a really key part that I'm going to unpack which always I thought was interesting when I was studying inflation is that perception plays such a huge role for both in inflation and in recession. So I think what you mentioned was like not enough stuff, right? There is sometimes a perception that there's not enough stuff. And then you also like have a run on buying stuff. Perception plays a huge part in market dynamics because one of the problems is information isn't perfect. Even though information is abundant, we don't know everything at the same time. So speculation can happen a lot. You know, you mentioned this a ground conflict, like these type of things can spur speculation which creates scarcity mentalities also. So there's a huge amount of psychology that is at play. And I say this because I know that this is trickling all the way down to like inside of your own home, people are having feelings, emotions, you know, anxieties, scarcity mentalities. This is not just something that you're, that you think is just happening to you. Like this is literally happening all over the world, including at sophisticated investment traders sitting at the New York Stock Exchange. So I think it's just important to know that like everything he's talking about is your, what you're experiencing is what everybody ex is experiencing. So much so that there's even a term for it. Correct me if I'm wrong coming, but it's called FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt. This is a term that is used in financial markets. Um, and it probably sums up how a lot of people are feeling in their day-to-day -day lives right now. Um, so just know that absolutely you're not alone, that these are dynamics that are happening everywhere. And you can put a name to them, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. They are pervasive. So now, now that we've talked about, you know, the first thing is like pointing out the, <laughs> the skeleton in the closet, like the thing we're not staring at. So much about money when it comes to women is avoiding the thing that we're uncomfortable with. So there it is. We're talking about inflation. There it is. We're talking about our own fears, our own uncertainties, and our own doubts. So let's talk about how to address that. How do how does the market fix it? What are some strategies to address it? Coming, how do we get over our personal FUD? How can we beat inflation? Hmm, good question. Good question. Um, just going back to FUD. Um, FUD is uh, uh, what people feel when things are, uh, are miserable. Uh, and, and, and uncertain uh, at the moment. Um, the flip side of FUD, um, so, that we, so, that, so that we have a, a more rounded picture, is that on the one hand, you have fear, FUD, 
And on the other hand, you also have greed at the same time. So you've got uh, fear and greed, and it's, it's, it's a constant battle. Some people are greedy um, uh, all the time. Some people are fearful all the time. Um, the question is, um, how much do you uh, set aside all the fear? How much do you set aside um, the greed and be uh, focused in what you do? Um, uh, as, as you point out, for women, there's so much more, uh, so much more fear. Um, uh, and uh, if women would, um, uh, would set that aside and just have a plan, uh, then the fear itself will subside. Um, mm. it, it's not an instant fix, um, but it is certainly something that, that you have to um, be wary of. Um, not so long ago, I think, uh, in the crypto space, which is where FUD is most often used, um, you've had massive amount of greed, so much greed. Um, and uh, many people got very caught up in that. So both sides um, are extreme. And, and having a plan, exactly as, as Bixi is, is helping so many women to, to, uh, to achieve, uh, is really key um, to building that long-term, uh, uh, stable, um, uh, stable and growing um, uh, sense of, of security. So that's, that's not answering your question at all. I'm totally aware. Um, but um, uh, I, I think to, to lead to, to answering that question, what can we do, um, is to sort of think in terms of uh, inflation and, and not just the fear aspect, but also actually, is it a bad thing, right? Um, and is it a bad thing and for whom? So I think if you start there, uh, you'll see that for a consumer, yes, things cost more, unless, of course, you get paid um, as uh, unless your pay increase is more than your the, than your uh, th than the cost of things going up, then you don't really care, right? If it's less or less by a bit, then you don't really care. If it's up by a lot, then of course you kind of like it, right? Um, uh, if you if you're a saver, then it is bad, right? Um, particularly if you have most of your uh, of your savings just sitting in cash or sort of deposit rate uh, deposits. Um, because um, the things that, that, that you would use to buy uh, with your savings, um, the price have gone up. So the real uh, value. I don't want to interrupt you. I just want to highlight, yeah. really, really underline. Cumming just made a really, really good point. Um, if you're a saver and your savings are in cash, inflation is not your best friend. Um, and just to note, the evidence points that women save up to 71% on average of our wealth is in cash more so than men. So we really have to be, if you think of this as a little wake up moment that Kaming just pointed out. If you're, if all of your world's wealth is sitting in a, a savings account, um, you know, at 1% or 2% and inflation is at 7%, you do the math, you're losing money on a day-to-day -day basis. Sorry, Kaming, I didn't want to interrupt you. I just wanted to like take a highlighter and flag that. This is a wake That's up That's absolutely call. the case, absolutely the case. So especially if, you're, if most of your savings or as you say, 71% or even all of your savings um, are, are, are just held in cash. It is definitely a bad thing. But it's also a bad thing even uh, in less inflationary times. You need to think uh, long term. Um, so it's not just a strategy for, um, for, for, um, uh, for inflationary times. And then you also have to think, well, it, it, who would inflation not be bad for? Uh, it would, it, in many cases, um, it would be companies. Right, companies uh, who are raising the prices, the bosses that I was talking about earlier, um, who are who are able to raise their prices, the ones who are able to raise their prices, unless their costs go up faster. So it's kind of the flip side um, of you as a consumer um, trying to get paid more. Um, uh, for com some companies, um, uh, they could charge more, mm -hmm. but um, not have their their costs go up as much. So so there are ways. I just want to flag again what you're saying. This is really critical. Everybody listen up. Number two thing that Kaming just said, in every situation, there are winners and there are losers. So what you just pointed out is really critical. Don't ever feel like, oh, the situation is so bad. There's no way to win. Oh, people win from bad situations all the time. So the key is what's your plan to be on the winning side of the bad situation, right? Sorry, please go ahead. So underline that. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you for the, thank you for the highlighter. Um, <laughs> um, and I, again, without going into sort of expectations and, and markets and economics too much, what typically happens uh, in the period of inflation and what we, we've seen happening, uh, both uh, in uh, actual 
activity as well as in perception and expectation, exactly as Rosalia pointed out, um, is that the authorities, the central banks, whoever, who, whoever, the man, um, they, they raise interest rates. They, cost, they raise the cost of money for businesses and people, right? And what happens then is that uh, things slow down. The cost of doing business slows down. That is not a, um, what, what, how, how do they say it these days? It's not a bug, it's a feature. They are trying to slow things down. They want things to slow down. So if you bear that in mind, uh, that, that while, things, uh, while prices are going up, while inflation is going up, interest rates uh, are more likely than not to continue to go up. Um, so think in terms of what interest rates uh, do for you and what interest rates do to you and take action on that basis. Okay, so um, besides uh, inflation itself having an impact on, say, companies and yourself as, as a spender, um, think in terms of interest rates and what happens to your deposit rates um, as well as to the stock market um, and other, other assets overall. And once uh, the, the slowing down, the feature, remember, not the bug, um, of uh, raising interest rates um, uh, actually happens, then interest rates can start to come down. And when interest rates go up, markets tend to come down, and you've seen them come down very aggressively already. Um, then what happens when, interest, when the feature kicks in and inflation comes down? Interest rates can then come down. And then what happens? The stock market can recover. Will it drop further from, uh, from where, where it is now? Will it start going up now? We don't know for sure, but we know that some point in the future, um, if you are paralyzed by fear now and don't start to participate, then uh, you will miss out um, on, uh, on the recovery and, and the uh, improvement in, uh, in the overall economy and business environment um, uh, that, that will be happening as a result of the actions that are being taken now. Is it going to be this year? Maybe. Next year? Probably. Maybe not. Yeah. This is really also, okay, so <laughs> baseline economics 101. The response to inflation in general by central banks, so central banks are these like <laughs> pseudo paras oh, God, I hate to use that word, pseudo parasitals inside of Every, every government has a central bank. The Philippines, it's called the Banco Central de Filipinas. They, are, they, reg, they set regulations about you know, e-wallet licenses. They set regulations about how money ebbs and flows in an economy, right? Um, the standard response globally from central banks whenever inflation sets in is to hike up the interest rates. Now, I know that that in and of itself sounds up here. But remember a couple of years ago, and I know a handful of women, you know, on this call benefited from like really low interest rates with their mortgages. Remember, there was a period where they were like giving away mortgages at like nothing interest rates, right? They were doing this because the interest rates were set so low by the central bank. So we, as a result, a lot of us were able to benefit from that. So now, you know, when uh, you made such a key point coming, and then I'm going to take questions from the audience because they are like literally flooding in. So, um, but I want to ask this follow-up question. You mentioned it's really important because now that we, kn we know central banks around the world are going to take this action, right? And you said it's important to know what interest rates are going to do to you and do for you. Can you tell us what a hike in interest rates will do to us? And then also tell us what it can do for us. Well, what it does to you um, would be, in, in a negative sense, obviously, uh, is, um, is raise the cost of your own borrowing. So the first... Like the um, mortgages, like grounding your mortgages, it. Mortgages, your borrowing. Um, if you happen to have a credit card and roll it over, please don't. But if you happen to do that, uh, then, then the, what you're paying um, uh, on those balances uh, will be uh, will, will 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 go up, right? Okay. So your costs uh, will go up. Your mortgage, if it's not fixed, will go up. So what you need to do is one, pay it down um, as much as you can, and two, yeah. try and get better rates. This is not the time to be loyal. Be careful of switching costs or costs of moving from one bank uh, lender to another. 
but try and uh, pay it down, if not only for higher interest rates, but because um, remember the feature is a slowing down economy, there are risks to your job as well, and you will still be paying your mortgage um, even if your salary stops. So pay down your debt um, uh, in an inflationary environment um, because, uh, because of all, for all these reasons. Perfect. That is such a good tip. Uh, I just, just like have like a virtual highlighter. Um, what it can do to you. So did you hear that? Any debt that you have, mortgages, car payment debt, credit cards, these are all at risk now of seeing that the interest rate go up. So pay down your debts. This is a good strategy right now. The flip side of what Cumming just mentioned, and this is not, do not let this get you anxious, but this is just to know. A slow, after the interest rates go up, right? It will slow down the economy, right? So you know that these there's these periods where like everybody's hiring and you're running around and you're like, I have like 20 job offers. And then there's periods where it's like nobody is hiring and you have like no job offers. The latter is likely to happen because the economy will slow down. So some people will lose their jobs. Some people won't necessarily, like they, they might not be able to get like a new promotion or, you know, transfer to a new company and earn more money, right? Because we have these like strategies for our, our career. So it's just important to know that like, okay, maybe next year, the year after is going to be a bit of a slower economy, but I'm still going to have bills to pay. So I need to start strategizing today about, you know, what, ha what if I don't have a job in a year? What if uh, I don't get a promotion in a year? Can I still afford my lifestyle? So we talk at Bixie a lot about the importance of having an emergency fund like while you are still gainfully employed, like maybe this is the time instead of, you know, shopping Lazada, take that money, put it in a shop, you know, put it in a, 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 an emergency fund and just future proof yourself for the future. I think it's, again, such a critical strategy um, that you can control today. That's, you know, that's, that might come in, in a year from now. So now the fun part, oh. what can interest rates, oh, sorry, go ahead. What, what can it do for you? Exactly. Yeah, now, now I want to get to the fun part. Okay, enough fear. What can a higher interest rate from the central bank do for us? Well, there's the um, there's a short term one um, and then a longer term one. Right. Um, the longer term one's a little bit more complicated, but not too complicated. Um, the short term one means that um, when you put your money into your uh, into your savings account for your emergency fund, you'll get a higher deposit rate for it. Will it keep up with inflation? Maybe, maybe not. In fact, probably not. But the important thing is that it's there and it's safe. And particularly with deposit insurance from or through the BSP, um, then it, it's safe that it is not your emergency fund, as I'm sure um, Rosalia has been saying, uh, is not there for you to make money. It's there to buy you um, safety in future and buy you um, peace of mind now, which is very important. Yeah. So that's the near term. Um, the longer term uh, is a little bit more, um, a bit more convoluted, um, and that's the impact uh, on uh, asset prices and markets. Again, this is where, um, where high inflation and, and the, the raised interest rates have an impact on uh, the valuations of markets, both perception, um, uh, both, both as a result of perception, as well as uh, the impact of um, the recession, the feature, remember, um, uh, has on, on businesses and companies. Now, if you can think longer term than most fund managers and most professional investors, which is to say think three, four, six, ten years out, then this is the opportunity that, that you have. You can beat inflation. You can win by being less afraid um, uh, than you were before and taking advantage of the opportunities. Will you potentially lose some money uh, in the near term? Maybe. <laughs> but um, but um, the key there, in fact, is to not look all the time. So if you're tracking um, uh, the, the movements every single day, then it'll drive you absolutely nuts. And I know that because I was doing that for, for my entire career uh, in, in the banks, and it drove us everybody absolutely nuts. Um, I would like to share, though, something that, that I'm sure has appeared um, through Bixie before, uh, a magic trick, um, which is uh, called dollar cost averaging. So, Ooh, 
he's getting into now he's getting into it, guys. Okay, okay, get your pens and papers out. <laughs> Dollar this is something you said. Averaging. Okay, now what it actually means is that you put in a certain amount of money every month um, and don't look at the price. Just don't look at the price. Um, and so the, the magic trick is that if you have a share price that goes from $5 to $4 to $6 and then back to $5, we, will, we all think that the average price will be $5. So if you're buying at each point, you think, ah, $5, obviously, right? It starts there, up and down. But if you um, dollar cost average, which means that you put in, say, $100, um, it, when it's $5, you get 20 shares. When it is $6, sorry, $4, you get 25 shares. When it goes up to uh, $6, you get about 17 shares. So at the end of it, the price has done nothing. It's still $5, right? It went down, up, down. And so, but you end up with 62 shares. You spend, yeah. you, you've yeah. invested $300 and you have 62 shares. And now your average price isn't $5, it's $4.80. And you I have done. I'm gonna. I, I want to yeah. highlight. This is so important. Like, so I'm also gonna plug. What? So I know that you know a lot of people think. Well, I, oh, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna buy a stock? Right. Go inside the Bixie app. We actually have an one of our favorite meetups. It was so popular. In fact, we're inviting her. She's coming back in July to help us with this inflation. She walked us through. The website you need to go to in the Philippines to purchase stocks. She literally walked us through like every single step to do it. So this, what coming is mentioning, this is not uh, like a pie in the sky. This is not inaccessible. Today, you can go to the Bixie app and go look up this. And we'll also, um, the team will link it in the events page. So you can find the exact video. It'll say exactly like go to this website, you can find the stock. This is how you this is how you can begin your investment journey at very little amounts in the Philippines. And then you take what Kaming just said because it's critical. You will own more of the company. When you buy low, you know that have you guys ever heard buy low, sell high? This is what he's talking about. You buy low, right? And then if you can just don't look, and we've all done this, like just don't look every day because it will drive you crazy. But just say, like, okay, I'm gonna look in like four years or like three years, right? The chances of it, you acquiring more, like selling high or having more proportion of what you're buying is more likely over time, right? So I think for like the big strategy of dollar cost averaging that Kaming is talking about, critical, practical, how do I get started today? Go watch that video from Jux Fantastico that we'll include in the Bixie app and you can literally start this today. This is perfect, I love it. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm following that one. <laughs> Thanks, Kaming. <laughs> so that's how to make inflation work for you. Buy low. Exactly. Sell high. That's the four. That's where it's okay. four. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Now, um, you... Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. So Eunice, don't don't listen to this part. Um, but um, the other thing that 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 you need to do is just go and ask for a raise because it's, it's it was the first thing I said. <laughs> I mean, ask for a raise. Always. Eunice, yes. Eunice, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that there you go. Thank always, you. always. No, no, no. I tell, <laughs> we undercut our own, our own follow. We're like, oh yeah, everybody should yeah. always ask for raises. Here's the strategy. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> ask for a raise and stay healthy. Um, uh, so these are these are very basic things. Um, uh, in the Philippines, in particular, your medical costs are not super high, but the uh, inflation in medical costs is very high, even before. Um, the, the sort of the post-pandemic um, uh, inflation. So, so you have to be very careful um, on that front, um, especially if, if we're looking at a recessionary period um, going forward. So those, those are our, those are, those sort of round off our tips, um, the, 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 the um, paying down your debt, your DCA uh, into, um, into investments. Um, and uh, really the, the biggest tip within that is, as Rosario said, don't look. <laughs> um yeah don't look i think like so critical so raise 
We actually, I am a big, big advocate, uh, particularly when it comes to women, terrible asking for raises. I tell everybody you would be asking for a raise, um, particularly on a quarterly basis. Always look at what, and there's strategies to do. You don't just walk into it, can I have more money? Because the first question is why. We actually created tips and strategies on effective, um, in, uh, effectively asking for and receiving a raise that's also available inside of the Big C community. Um, you can ping any of our moderators, go to live, and they'll navigate you to where you can do that. We have a whole group circle dedicated to that where we answer questions on effectively asking for a raise. I, I can't even believe, you know, it's so funny. I didn't even think about that when I was like, oh, the inflation beating session. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a good one. <laughs> Ask for more money. That makes a ton of sense. And there's strategies on how you do it. Um, it always walk in. So you generally, you'll, you know, you don't just walk in and ask for a raise. You have to show the why, and we walk you through the quantitative and qualitative ways in which you can do that. And the last thing he just mentioned, stay healthy. I mean, you know, those are one of those things that people think, oh, I'll just stay healthy. We're in the middle of like another, you know, peak in the pandemic. Um, it's, these things are costly and they'll cost you. So take extra, extra care because, you know, that, it, just because you've had it once doesn't mean you can't get it twice or three times and doesn't mean it can't get worse the second or third time around. In fact, unfortunately, the latest research actually shows that it can it can get worse. So really prioritizing our physical health and our mental health um, obviously helps us not only deal with asking for a raise, but dealing with that FUD and also sitting down in front of our you know computers and phones and saying, all right, what is my debt situation and how am I going to pay it down? These are your health is the most, your health is your wealth. It's the number one most important thing. So I am actually tempted to flip around all of your strategies. I would say like number one, you know, stay healthy. Uh, number two, get out there and ask for a raise because it's pretty easy to do. Uh, number three, sit down this weekend, get a cup of tea and work out what your debt is, right? Um, and then number four, get involved in this dollar cost averaging and we can help you like figure out how to do that. But that's super important. Um, okay, so we have 15 minutes left. Um, coming was just like giving way too much information. So we're going to have to figure out a way to put it all together. And we'll make <laughs> all of these tips available in the community. But I do want to ask some questions or have some questions from the audience because there have been so many. Okay, so here I am. Where am I? There we go. Okay. Okay, where do I even start? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of amens. Okay. <laughs> um, I believe there's a question okay. here. I, I would I, I would like to ask this. Somebody's asked, is the six infl is the six percent inflation rate too high? Same um, question. <laughs> it, it, it's that's that's an interesting question. It's it, it's um there are lots of layers to that, like um, how much is a healthy amount of inflation in an economy? Um, and we can go down a, 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 a very deep rabbit hole uh, on that front. Um, but I think uh, you could say that it's too high if your pay isn't keeping up um, and if your returns are not keeping up. Your returns, meaning uh, your total uh, portfolio, uh, exclude your emergency fund, as, as mentioned earlier, if your total portfolio um, over the long term is uh, less than 6%, it's too high. If, it's, uh, if your total returns are more than 6%, you're doing just fine. And in fact, many, some of the companies in your portfolio or some of the holdings in your portfolio as funds or ETFs um, uh, could be doing very well out of a 6% uh, inflation rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, so. is it too low, too high? Uh, are you shocked? every month or are you feeling like yeah i'm actually pretty good this month that's the indicator for if it's too low or, or too high um but i also if i if i can add just some color to this uh, i think in general it's you know the the standard is like five to seven percent so it's five to seven percent over the course of what is it five or ten years like you can expect that you know a dollar today or 100 pesos today doesn't buy you the same as 100 pesos 10 years ago like that is normal it's when it just far outpaces um, income generation or income uh, increases in a short period of time. That's when the news outlets and everybody and the central bank steps in because that's when it's going to pose a problem. 
But just so that you guys know, or you ladies know, there are countries out there that get like they call hyperinflation, where things go like really nuts. And we're talking 20 percent, 25 percent. That's those are those are very rare and few and far between. Um, but so, you know, I, I say this not to fr freak anybody out. I say this because, you know, just to put things in perspective, like 6% is not 25%, right? So, um, you know, don't attach too much media hysteria to, to certain situations. Like you, you're still very much in a place where you can navigate and strategize to deal with it. You know, I think when you start getting into 30% and put, then, you know, the things are different. So you're still very much within the, you know, a good, a, a space where you can do something about it. You can take action. All right. Another question. Um, this is actually a really good question. I know you talked about it, but maybe give a little bit more color. How does inflation affect my salary? Give me like the real, how does inflation really affect my salary? Anya. Hmm. Um, how does it affect your salary? Uh, in, a, in a perfect world, in a way, um, it would um, go up at the same time, same, at the same rate uh, that uh, you, your, the, your costs go up, so that everything is, is level and everything is, is even. Um, so in a sense, it, it, uh, it, it, won't, it shouldn't affect your salary if you're out, out there asking for a raise, right, Eunice? Um, uh, uh, and not trying to get uh, too far ahead. So that's actually where the perception comes in. And this is where it gets really, really dangerous because if you're, if you're expecting not just a 6% raise, but another 6% raise and, and then another 10% raise going forward, then Eunice, would you be asking, sorry, I'm sorry, Rosario, but Eunice, no, would you be please. asking for 6% or would you be asking for maybe 7 or maybe 8 or maybe 9%? And if everybody does that, then the impact on costs of your from your bosses and and all the other bosses um, would be would be broad based and would cause your cost to then go up not at the six percent rate that it, that it was going up at uh, which you were trying to respond to but at what you were expecting other prices to continue to go up uh, uh, at so uh, it, it's not a simple answer i'm afraid um, but um, the impact on your on your salary uh, is uh, in in the short term uh, uh, that it will buy less unless you get a raise. Yep. So that I think you know to one boy's point that she made earlier, she went to the gas tank uh, a year ago. It would have been what one fiftieth of your monthly salary. Now it's like one tenth of your monthly salary, right? Like so, if you have a pie chart, which Join the Bixie app, you need to have a budget. If you have a budget and you look at kind of a pie chart of how much have I spent on entertainment, on food, on gas, you're going to start seeing bigger pieces of the pie chart in certain things, which actually, and when I say certain things, this is another really good question um, that Anya brought over for our Facebook community. Which industries or sectors do you think will be impacted by inflation first? And I would venture to say maybe hardest. And which ones will take the longest to recover? This is a, I'm listening as I'm taking notes because this is also a, it's a very good question and a, a nice workaround. Well, actually, I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at your pie chart and you split it up into stuff that you need and stuff that you want, then, uh, then you'll get, you'll have the answer right there. Um, the stuff that you need um, uh, will, will eat up a bigger piece. The stuff that you want has less to, um, uh, has less of the pie. That will have to shrink. Sorry, that was um, like, that jokes level advice when she literally is like when people are like what do i invest in she's like look around pick five items that you use all the time there you go that was probably the best articulation i've ever heard of like which industries will win and which will lose write down the things i need and the things i want the things i need are generally what everybody else is going to need and those are going to be the winners and the things i want are you know arguably not i think that was just I'm going to use that and I'm going to go straight to the index and I'm going to pick companies. <laughs> on that. Not, not investment advice. Um, and in <laughs> fact, the, the, the share prices themselves um, may be, uh, you know, may, be um, may, may have already responded again, perception ahead of time and behind, but broadly speaking as industries, but to some extent also uh, as uh, uh, if you think of, of it in terms of asking for a raise, um, then 
if you're in an industry that is uh, a consumer staple, the needs, um, then you have a better chance of getting that raise of six or six and a half percent, maybe. Um, if you are in, in a, an industry um, that hopefully you love being in, you're, you enjoy, you get fulfillment from it, uh, but it's a, what they call a consumer discretionary, which in other words is a, is a once based company, then, uh, then one of the strategies I'm sure is to try and understand the company that you're, you're speaking with. Um, and then if you, if you're, you know, if half of your team is uh, at risk of maybe not losing your jobs, but, but sort of um, having less work to do, then you would be less aggressive with that. So you can think of it in terms of uh, the industries um, and the bosses and the, the businesses uh, that you're talking to. When you translate that into, into companies and investments, um, you have to do your own research, exactly as you said in the first, uh, first five minutes. Um, but but uh, you know, the, it gives you a, an idea of where you can start looking. Mm -hmm. Well, boy, K-pop, need or want? <laughs> it's a, uh, sorry, it's a need. <laughs> this this is actually um, a superb question, if I, a, a superb question to, 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 to her, because um, our belief um, uh, is that um, you spend money um, and there are needs and wants, and that's very, very important. But it's also how it makes you feel. Um, yeah. And it's not all about um, uh, the numbers. Of course, it boils down to numbers, but it's not all about just um, the, the, the absolute um, amount that you spend. If you spend some, uh, on something that is a want, but it gives you great joy, then, okay, you know, it's, it's been a rough couple of years. Yeah, maybe you'd keep that up. But if you spend something that, uh, that, that is a want and you're like, eh, I, I barely noticed it, uh, then, uh, then why are you doing that? And the only way to uh, manage that, we believe, is to keep a journal. And it's not a, it's not a spending tracker as such. Um, it's what we call a, sort of a, a money journal, a money feelings journal. It's where you're spending your money and just write down how you felt about it. So it's not just, oh, I bought a pair of you know, uh, new Adidas sneakers, um, but, you know, but write how you felt about it. Um, it is most likely discretionary, but if you feel good about it, then okay, at least you're aware of it. it it's having that awareness of where your money is going if it's a need and, it, and, and you felt like it felt, eh, it, it's, it's kind of, I just had to, um, there are still ways of, um, of managing that as well. If, the, if it's a need and it's something that, that gives you joy, like your mortgage on your home, no one likes paying interest, but you know, your, your home makes you, makes you happy, mm. then, then, then be aware of it. So it's the awareness of what it brings to you, not just what it does to, to, your, to the Big C pie chart um, and the budget. I think what you just said was if I could reduce it into like 10 words um, or, or a strategy in two words, if it sparks joy, then yeah. probably it's, it's, it's a want, right? Um, so Marie Kondo, your finances, you like, does this spark joy? No. Like, does it, you know, <laughs> and I think, um, funnily enough, I feel like all of our shared experiences during the pandemic kind of showed us what we need and want and what sparks joy, right? Like you, you can't just live on bread alone. You, you need, you need a, a something to inspire. Our souls also need, you know, something to, to eat, right? And, and that might be K-pop for some people. It might be Netflix for other people, but we, we didn't give up everything and just eat bread for two years during the pandemic. So, and I think what also, that also makes a more sustainable savings and investment strategy, you do need to have a couple of things that spark joy or else like why on earth are you alive? Um, so I hate to be this person, but we actually have just ended our time. We have so many other amazing questions. Here's what I propose. I propose that we collect all of these questions. Um, we send them over to coming and maybe we can even do like a video of like answering some of these questions. Um, <laughs> we post it, we'll put it, you know, back in, inside of our, our app. Um, and, and I'm this whole month, by the way, everybody is dedicated to inflation. We're doing a series of talks from experts like coming on 
how to beat it, how to defeat it, how to, you know, how to deal with all of the different aspects of, of inflation. Um, but I, I really see this is probably one of the most engaged conversations. Like there have been so many questions. So, and the reason we're doing this series this month is because this has been the number one trending topic acro across all of our channels. So we really wanted to address this concern. Um, so I, I, I foresee there might even be a part two uh, where we just focus on Q and A's, um, you know, bring on an expert, ask them like, what, you know, <laughs> break this down again, because obviously we threw a lot, a lot your direction. Um, mm. Just so that you know, one of the things that I think is also really interesting about like economics and inflation, there's not everybody knows why it starts. Like, it, so don't feel confused. Like, oh, I don't know what this means. Neither do the experts. Like everyone is just kind of like, eh, sometimes it happens. It's like this thing. So as, 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 as quickly as, as it can appear, it can also disappear. Um, so don't feel that there are things you don't understand. We're all just trying to figure it out together. And as we always say, hashtag wag me, we are all gonna make it. Um, so our job here at Bixie is to keep you all informed, networked in, and to give you the tools necessary to do something about your own financial uh, security and financial freedom. So we hope we've done that with you all today. I wanna thank you very, very, very much coming for sharing your knowledge. There were so many truth bombs um, that the team is like gonna summarize and reshare in the next handful of days. Uh, I am gonna use your four-step strategy in my own life. Um, but number one, everybody stay healthy. It's pretty, you know, it's probably the cheapest thing you can do on the list costs you nothing, you know, but just keep healthy, healthy because your health is your wealth. Um, thank you so much for your time, for your expert advice. And uh, yeah, we'll take all the questions. We'll also allow for open questions on the live, uh, the Bixie live circles. So if you have a question, you can go ahead and do that. And uh, we might just ask you back during inflation J July, where we all figure out collectively how to how to beat it and not be defeated. So thank you so much, everybody, for your time. As always, uh, really grateful for this community, really grateful for your engagement. And uh, we look forward to you guys at the next session. I'm gonna leave my colleagues Eunice and Bill to close out with any last administrative issues, but download the Big C app, seriously, get involved, join the community. Um, all of the follow-up information will be shared in live. So download, refer and earn, get involved, um, and be part of the next three weeks. We're just going to focus on inflation. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Salia. And most especially, thank you, coming for tonight's Big C Meetup. This topic, like what I said, is really, really relevant and very timely. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers absolutely learned not only a thing or two from you, but a lot. Like, I think starting tomorrow, I would apply the things that I've learned from you for my daily life. And yes, thank you so much. I can finally justify that K-pop is, you know, sparks me joy. And yes, I am justified in what I'm doing with K-pop. But before anything else, yes, like what Mr. Salia mentioned a while ago, we will keep track and we will take note of your questions and we will put them in our community wherein you can all participate and even share your own answers and thoughts on the questions that are not answered here. But of course, before you get to participate in our live circles, which is very, very interactive and yes, uh, very enriching, you have to first ta -da, download the app. It's free on both Apple Store and Google Play. And after you download the app, you can also avail of there. You can refer the app to your friends and to your networks to download and you can automatically earn free Bix coins. And once you download the app, you can exercise your spending power by buying these essential oils from Joy in a Bottle wherein you would get exclusive 20% discount once you purchase these exclusively from the Bixie app. And another thing wherein you can exercise once again your spending power is by buying your coffee fix, Juris Gruden's coffee, and you will get an exclusive 20% discount when you purchase your coffee fix through the Bixie app. And next, wait, hold on. Okay, so... If you want to know what we're doing and what Bixie is all about, our white paper is out and about. 
it's available on our website and it's available on our Instagram. You uh, during your your spare time, feel free to navigate about what Bixi is and and read about us, what our mission is all about, and what we are doing for. And next, last but not the least, I am here once again to promote the new releases from our app. So first, you have to download and you will experience the updates in our app. So the tools have been moved or have been transferred to the navigation bar. And the goals, you can also share your goals and what's my number, where, wherein it's also found in the tools part. And next, my favorite update. Our vibe is brighter and lighter. So you will have more time you know, to look at the app because it's very pleasing to the eye. And the knowledge bar uh you can wherein you can search in your favorite articles or you can search also your your favorite videos when it comes to savings and investments and anything and everything under the sun and you can simply just bookmark those videos bookmark those articles and like what i said instead of wasting so much time on social media why not waste your time in investing in <laughs> And share your goals with the community. Apart from typing in your questions and your thoughts, you can also share the goals that you've achieved in What's My Number and all the other tools found. You can share it in the community that can somehow encourage them to save up and to achieve their goals. So last but not the least, you can view the updates and other notifications uh, on the notification bell found on the upper right corner of the app. And yes, that's it for our updates and for the rest of what's happening on the Big C app that you can only experience once you download the app. So I guess that's it for tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. And that's Beat It, Strategies to Beat Inflation. Happy Thursday. And we will all see you definitely next week for another round of Big C Meetup. And we will talk about in inflation once again so thank you very much and happy thursday bye bye, bye. thank you bye